Now that From is gaining the popularity it deserves, the fans of the series are scared of seeing the show befall the same fate as another popular TV show from the early 2000s. Yep, that's right, Lost. For the fans who are new to this series, this show and Lost share the same showrunners. We all remember how the conclusion of Lost felt. So now the question is, Will From follow the footsteps of its predecessor? Let's discuss. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What do the showrunners have to say? The fans have been racking their brains about the future of the show ever since the first season ended. Things were pretty tense for our characters, and we all needed answers. Jeff Pinker, John Griffin, and Jack Bender have sat down for several interviews since then and their words haven't changed much from their first interview since the show aired. The showrunners have repeated time and again that they have a story to tell this time, unlike Lost, which they had to stretch out as it gained popularity. This time, for From, they plan on wrapping things up without stretching it out. Now, I know how we all feel about the getting 50 new questions each episode and barely coming out with two answers. As fans, we're frustrated, to say the least. At this point, we would rather reach into the screen and turn over the rocks ourselves, if that means getting us some answers. Well, to that, John Griffin the mastermind who came up with the story, has said that the clues about what's actually happening in the town are sprinkled throughout the show. If we simply look outside the window and try to peer deeper, we would be able to figure it out ourselves. Both Jack Bender and Jeff Pinker have seconded those sentiments. They say that all the clues are right there. While they don't expect every viewer to see those clues and solve the mystery right away, when it all does get unraveled, none of the viewers would be left feeling stupid. I think a lot of us fans were worried that this show would be like one of those plots where everything ends up becoming a dream or something. Well, luckily for for us, the creators have confirmed that this will not be like the last season of Dallas, where you walk in and find Patrick Duffy in the shower and everything you've seen happen so far is just a dream. Phew, that's a relief. If the show did turn out to be a dream, I promise I would riot. The showrunners have also said that they're well aware of the questions that the viewers might be having, and the show plans on acknowledging every question that they're seeing. They have a set mythology which they're going to explore bit by bit. While that can be a little frustrating to watch on screen owing to the slow pace, the audience will be extremely satisfied with the ending. The journey that we've started already has an ending and the showrunners just want us to sit back and enjoy the ride. As it turns out, when John Griffin first pitched the idea of the show to his partners, Jack Bender asked the same question that we've been asking for so long. What is up with the town? Apparently, John Griffin went down a full rabbit hole exposition dump for the next 40 minutes on call, which both Jack and Jeff enjoyed quite a bit. Usually, I take these interviews and the statements with a grain of salt, but if what the showrunners said about the 40-minute call is true, then we can have high hopes for this show. Clearly, John has spent quite a while creating this extremely deep lore about this place, its treacherous ways of working, and its enigmatic past. The passion, the love, and the enjoyment that the showrunners have put in this TV series is so obvious that I, for one, definitely feel like maybe From would truly live up to our expectations. Moreover, it may even surprise us a bit more on the way by throwing some unexpected things that we didn't know we could get. Who knows? But let's be honest. Ultimately, the success of the show is not dependent on what the showrunners have to say. It amounts to how we, the audience, react to it. So the next question at hand is... Don't touch me, don't touch me, don't, 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 don't. The other side of the coin, the audience and their opinion. Fan forums of this show have had a recent meme pop up now and then. It's a photoshopped image of an old and wrinkly Boyd walking up the town and doing his sundown bell routine as usual. The joke, of course, is that the characters, as well as the viewers, are going to age into their geriatric selves before the show makes any meaningful progress. While it would seem funny on the surface, one cannot help but wonder if this is the common perception or opinion regarding how things will turn out. Are we going to get a satisfying conclusion? A gripping denouement? Or is all the hype and intrigue going to fizzle out into irrelevance? Well, I think the fans overall are split into two opposing factions. On the one hand, we have fans like me, who are extremely hopeful that things are going to get solved to a degree by the end of the third season. Given that when Lost was airing, the writer's strike was going on, which ended up overruling a lot of plans that the showrunners initially had. Fans feel like we have a better shot at getting a lot of answers this season. These are the few things that the fans are hoping to get by the end of season 3. What do the numbers in the bottle tree mean? Are they dates? If so, then what do they signify, especially when we have the dates that go 600 years into the future? If they're not dates, then what could they be? Are they codes? Musical notes? Is there a pattern that maybe the characters can follow and solve the overall mysteries about this place? Fatima's weird pregnancy. Is it there or is it not? Up until now, we've been following Fatima's journey through her surprise pregnancy. We do not know if Christy actually gave her pregnancy a test or not, but she did confirm Fatima's pregnancy. Then Fatima had some really weird pregnancy cravings, which concerned her and Ellis when she told him about it. Finally, 
finally, they managed to get a USG of Fatima's uterus, and look at that, there's no fetus. While this could be a case of false pregnancy, a very real and rare medical condition that happens to some people, I think there's more to it. Maybe by the end of this season, we'll know if Fatima is growing a demon baby or not. Because hear me out, if it is a demon baby, how would it show up on a normal USG? I know this sounds like a big brain idea, but er, supernatural problems require supernatural solutions. And I'm happy with this explanation. Another big thing that I, as a diehard From fan, have been going absolutely crazy over is the Yankui kids. Listen, I don't mind the ghostly kids in a supernatural town. We all know that the horror cliche is a creepy grandma and a creepy kid, and Fromville has both. But what is up with these pasty kids? What do they want? What does Ankui mean? I mean, we have made a video on this topic, which you guys can definitely check out, but the word Ankui has so many meanings because we're literally drawing parallels in different languages based on the phonetics and not the word itself. Are these kids pointing something out to Tabitha? Do they want her to look at something? Remember something? I don't know, and I'm dying for answers. What entity is controlling this town? What do they want? They told Sarah to kill Ethan. So do they need to sacrifice another child to finally get out of this wretched town? Could it be that the cycle did not end because Victor was left alive by the end of the last town massacre? So many questions. So little answers. Another thing that I think definitely deserves our attention has to be Julie, Randall, and Mary's trauma from the Music Box Monster. I do not think we're even scratching the surface of what they have gone through. I think all fans would agree when I say that in this town, no one talks about their traumatic experiences. And that needs to be changed as soon as possible. People need to start talking. Not in the haughty or accusatory way we saw in the anticipated town meeting, but more in the way Boyd told Jade about the bottle tree he saw. I think whatever visions they saw, whatever they can remember out of the many, would finally play a crucial role in understanding the town and its past better. I don't know if it's just me, but the kimono lady has been changing subtly every time we see her. When we saw her back in season 2, I noticed that it seemed like she was just skin and bones, and maybe you could see a few muscles over her thin, pale skin. But the last time she showed up, you know, in the 6th episode, she looked a lot healthier. My question is, why is this woman getting healthy? I don't want a demon starting to look more alive than ever, especially when everything in the town is going up in flames. That looks like bad news, or you know, like Bacta would say, this is some bad juju right there. Also, she keeps asking Elgin for help. How exactly is he supposed to help her? Is it one of those, you must find my body and give me a proper burial type of case? I doubt that. I wouldn't be surprised if she tells Elgin to kidnap Fatima or hurt Fatima. The reason I say Fatima and not Tilly is because of the difference in her demeanor when she shows up around Fatima versus when she shows up around Tilly. I feel like when Tilly is around and the kimono lady shows up, she's more trying to entice Elgin into helping her. But when she showed up from Fatima's picture, she sounded a lot more desperate. That's why I feel like there's a connection between Fatima and the kimono lady. And I wouldn't be surprised if the help that she wants from Elgin is effectively go kidnap slash hurt Fatima and give me her baby. Because in my eyes, this kimono lady is an Ame Ongna, which we've already covered in one of our videos if you're curious. The Ame Ongna is basically a Japanese yokai who goes after kids. A grieving mother turns into one and seeks out babies to fulfill whatever was lost. So if that's true, it would make total sense if she goes after Fatima's baby and sends Elgin after her. But now that we don't know if Fatima has a baby or not, I'm curious to see how they tie up this loose end. Jade has been engrossed in his quest to unravel the entire tangle of questions that we all have. It wouldn't be surprising if some of our questions, in part, get answered by the end of this season, as Jade figures them out. Perhaps he'll get a clue as to what the symbols have to do with the history and workings of the place. Or since the numbers from the bottle tree have been central to his ponderings throughout the season, maybe his arc would wrap up with him figuring out what those mean. For this season, at least. I don't know about you, but Jade is one of those few characters whom I have high hopes for, especially considering the immense character development he went through. Speaking of Jade, we've clearly seen that the cycles that keep repeating across the history of Fromville have a few central characters and their roles in common. If Tabitha is Miranda's counterpart, we could finally have a definitive answer. If Jade is the same for Christopher, I wouldn't be surprised if the cycles represent lifetimes, and Jade and Tabitha turn out to be reincarnations of their earlier versions. What do you guys think? It seems imminent at this point that the next big chunk of lore or expositions might just be coming from Victor's escapades as usual. Yes, I'm talking about Jasper and whatever he might have to reveal regarding the future or the past of this town. I, for one, do not exclude the possibility that a conversation with Jasper is what might bring back a flood of submerged memories and recollections in Victor's mind, effectively giving everyone the next step of navigating out of this maze. Last but not least, I think it's about time that the story introduced earlier elements that the show has only teased so far. We wouldn't want the intrigue from, let's say, the voice on the radio or the subjects of Miranda's paintings to be forgotten now, would we? I think it would serve as an amazing shock factor for the later parts of this 
season to bring some of those entities to the forefront. That way, while Boyd, Tabitha, Victor, and Jade are up against their own obstacles, Jim gets his own challenge to overcome. Perhaps the voice on the radio from season one and the voice that calls himself Thomas are one and the same. But perhaps I'm reaching way too much. While I've only listed 10 points here, I'm sure there are a lot more specific points that other fans have been wondering about. While a lot of us enjoy the slower pacing of the show and the build-up to the climax, there are the other group of fans who do not like the pacing. In their eyes, the pacing is making the show boring and almost a bit of a drag. I can't blame them. Plus, a lot of fans are finding the recent changes in the personality of characters, especially Fatima, quite annoying. I mean, I do understand their perspective. Fatima went from being this super optimistic character to someone who's a bit hypocritical. Fans have been quick to point out how she kept piling onto Tabitha in the town meeting, when she herself repeatedly shot down help from other people. So you can be the judge of that. Are you team Fatima or are you team not? Marvelous Verdict, the story of From and the TV show as a whole, seems to be a passion project for all the creators involved. I can understand why they're so particular about the pacing, as they want us to enjoy this mysterious ride to its fullest degree. However, at the same time, all the things that the fans have been complaining about, with more characters being introduced while no answers being given to us, is also a very evident problem. While I don't think that From is going to have a disappointing ending, I'm certain that From is going to disappoint the fans, who are much more accustomed to quick pacing and writing. What do you guys think about the show? Do you think it will have a disappointing ending? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys on the next Marvelous video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone!